Hey guys, Kimberly here and happy April 87th, it feels like. And if you saw the title of this video, you already know what's coming. You already know. But we know this is what I do. This is what I do. You guys, follow-up systems, I have to test. I have to try. And you guys know I fall in love and I fall in love hard. But here's the deal. I wanted to share how I came to this realization. And you can see when you go to my channel, right? Like I literally, I test all the things. I've tested Evernote and a happy planner and a desk calendar and just reminders on my phone, Siri, um, Trello, right? Streak. I've tried them all. I've tried them all. But I wanted to give you um, just some thoughts about where I am going, why I'm going there, and why I'm loving it. So here's the deal. If you are a Sensi consultant, in our contacts tab, we have a very important column, and it is called last purchase date. Now, some of you out there didn't even know this column existed, but a lot of you, like me, use that column every single month. So the last purchase date column is really important if you send mail of any kind. And if you're trying to send to a lot of people at once, and if you need to like mail merge is the big one. So like if you're going to be exporting a spreadsheet, putting it in Avery, so that way Avery prints the addresses on the postcard or on the labels, that is where last purchase date comes in very handy. Well, October, November-ish, 2019, that column disappeared. It went away. And there was no ETA of when that was gonna be coming back. So about that time frame, October, November, I started keeping a spreadsheet of my customers, the date they ordered, and their address. So that way I could mail merge, right? Well, over the last, like, I don't know, four months, five months, six months, it feels like it can't believe it's been that long. Over that time, slowly I've been adding in columns to this spreadsheet of other things that I wanted to track that I couldn't track anywhere else. So. One of the things that I really wanted to track was I wanted to see like the average my customers spend. Now, there's really no way to figure that out unless you add it all up and you divide it, right? Well, spreadsheets can do that for you. So I started adding in a column for every month and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna kind of backdate this. So I started going back and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do another formula and I'm gonna try to find out how much my customers have spent because that is a really great um, opportunity to have a conversation with your customers. If they're spending a lot of money, like listen, you could get back X, you could have gotten back X amount of dollars, right? You buy enough that you could support yourself in this business. So again, over time, I keep adding these columns of like, well, did I send them a thank you? Yes, I did, right? And of course, yes, I could track this in Trello, but it's so much easier at a glance this way. So literally a couple of weeks goes, you know what? I am tired. I am tired of updating my Trello and updating the spreadsheet when the spreadsheet has so much more power. So I stopped using Trello and I wanted to share with you how I'm doing my follow-up now and all the different columns that I've added because if you are a consultant and you follow Chloe Cox, she shared um, her customer follow-up a couple of days ago and hers is very similar to this just in a happy planner so if you're a paper and pen person I will link her video somewhere up here down there and you can go watch hers but she has the files for the paper version of this I am doing this in Google Sheets so if you are a digital lover you can do this on any um, you don't have to have like Excel or numbers it's a web based spreadsheet um, and you can add and take away columns, right? So um, I'll show you all of mine and you can make it your own. Now, before I do this, before I show you this, I need for you to promise me, promise me that you will not be overwhelmed, okay? There's a lot of stuff that's going on in here, okay? There's a lot, but you can scale it back and make it your own. You can delete columns, you can add columns, but I wanted to walk you through my thought process and how I do this, so that way you can see if it would work for you. Now, I'm gonna link this exact spreadsheet in the description of this video, so that way you can literally, and I have instructions here, right? 
you want to use this spreadsheet, just come up here to file, make a copy, and then change the name of it to be whatever you want it to be. I call mine connections because I don't really follow up whenever I'm doing this. It's more just building the relationship. So I wanted to walk you through what this looks like. So this first column does a couple of things for me. This lets me know that yes, I sent a follow-up and what did I send in that follow-up? Because again, if you are not tracking what you're sending, there is no point in sending something because it's just a waste. It's just a waste. So if it is filled in, like the yellow highlight, that to me means that I have sent something, okay? So if I click on April, I can see up here, okay, so I sent the Johnny Appleseed dish soap and now in Zen Soak. You can also add in the promotional flyers that you put, if anything, here. Um, but here, you can see there's like that little black triangle there. That means that there's a note attached to that cell. And on all these up here, that's letting you know, just an FYI of what that cell is doing. So document the samples that you sent um, so you can follow up and ensure you aren't sending the same samples. That's important because I don't want to send the same sample as that last month to this customer. So I have their last purchase date, okay? Last purchase date, their name, this is their entire address. This column here is how they like to be communicated with. So it's a drop down, and if you want to add another way of communicating, I can show you how to do that. Facebook, text, email, Instagram. So if you wanna add something in here, you're gonna choose the entire column, data, data validation, and you can come in here and you can type in something else, okay? And then you hit save, and then it'll be a new drop down item. So this one is the due date column. So for me, I touch base with every single one of my customers once a month, every single month for 12 months, okay? It might seem a lot, but it's not, hey, you wanna buy something, it's how are you doing? Like, what's going on, let's chat kind of a thing. Um, and then this note right here lets you know that I have formatting attached to it. So if it is a date in the past, it's gonna be red. If it's a date today, it's gonna to be yellow. If it's in the future, it's gonna be green. So if I kind of drag this down, you'll be able to see it change. So you can see what that looks like, okay? Now, this next column is just an at a glance, what did they order? So if I have someone who ordered a ton of different things, I really, I just choose products because it's a lot of products, right? But this is just an, an idea at a glance. Um, and again, same thing. If you want to add products, just go to data, data validation. Notes column is for just any generic notes. So I keep track of if someone, so if you're in Trello, this would be kind of like all the different labels that you have. So for this, it could be a locator order. It could be maybe a referral for somebody, a party order, whatever you want to use the notes column for. That's totally up to you. Now, these next columns right here, this is my rolling year of total amount purchased. So April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, right? Just goes all the way through. So here I put the total PRV that that person purchased. Okay, so 83. Then a cool thing is that you can literally copy their order from the workstation. You do right click, insert note, and then this will pop up, you can paste it in there. So that way you can see what someone ordered at a very quick, quick glance. Now in all of these columns, I have a formula set up, so that way if you type something in this cell, and in this cell, and in this cell, their year-to-date total over here is going to update. So we'll be able to see how much this person has ordered. Another good thing about this, you guys, is you can see how often someone is ordering. So that way, like if you have someone who has ordered every single month, love on them. Send them something, right? Love on those people. Uh, okay, so the next column is going to be um, if you offer the opportunity. So here I have yes, no, they joined or they're a previous consultant, and then also keeping track of their email. You guys, another good reason to do something like this is because you never know when those tabs are gonna go down. And you guys know, when we have sale, sometimes they you know, disable some of those tabs to allow for more traffic to be able to be on our website. And if you need something from one of those tabs, especially in the context tab, this is a great way to keep track of it. 
So you can see that I have like this here is like a solid gray and this here is solid gray. Now I made this to where when you scroll, the address, like the labels don't move and then the date they ordered and their name doesn't move. So if I kind of bring this over, if I scroll, you can see how the name stays there and then their um, information stays there when you scroll the other way. Now, when it comes to the due date, when it comes time to follow up, literally every single day I come down, I sit down and I will sort either by A to Z or Z to A um, and it'll let me know, okay, these are the people that I need to follow up with. And as soon as I follow up with them, okay, it, let's say it's 420. All right, I followed up with them. I just do 520 and it changes to green. It's now in the future. Super, super simple. So let's say you've had a bunch of other orders and you've had other people who have been put on top of Sally, like the 22nd, the 23rd, right? And let's say Sally comes in and she orders again. If you need to find Sally, maybe she ordered months ago and she ordered again. If you need to find Sally, you're gonna to wanna to choose the column with all the names, do edit, find and replace, then you're gonna search for Sally, find, and it's gonna find it for you, okay? And if it's further down the spreadsheet, it's gonna bring you to that cell. So then if I say, all right, so Sally ordered today, I'm gonna to come up here and I'm gonna change her to the 24th, enter. Now, once someone orders like that, I always wanna come back up here and sort it again so that way it moves Sally's order up to the top because she was the last person to order. Another thing that you can do too is let's say that, and this is what I was telling you about the cart size, let's say that you've had, you know, let's say some more people who have ordered. I'm just gonna enter those in. So what you can do is I'm gonna insert a row and maybe you name this cart size, whatever you want it to be. So if you want to know what your average customer spends, you're gonna do some formulas, okay? And you can always Google, okay? Google is your friend when it comes to this. Um, but we're gonna do a sum, so equal, sum, and then the open parenthesis. And then I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna choose the cells. Now if you have 50 customers, you're gonna go all the way down to 50 customers, right? Um, but I just need these. And then so you can see it's L3 through L8. Then I'm gonna do a close parentheses. And then I'm gonna do a divide. Where's my divide? Divide, okay, so then I'm gonna count how many orders I had. So that's how many customers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Divided by six. The average customer spends $38. So how can I as the consultant ensure that I increase my average cart size to 45, to 50, right? So that's also really, really important to know as well. Now, something you might come across is see how this one, it didn't update. The formula didn't update. So all you have to do is when you click on another one that it did work on, you can see this little square here. If you click on this square and just drag it up, drag it down, doesn't matter. You can drag it all the way down if you want to. It's gonna apply that formula to that cell, okay? So that is one thing that is very, very helpful to know. So the last thing I wanna share with you is how I use this to mail out packages. Now, if you're mailing the same package, the same contents, the same weight to a bunch of people at once, you can save it as a CSV and upload it to Pirate Chip. Normally, whenever I'm sending things, some people get more, some people get less depending on what they order. So what I do is I have my spreadsheet open and then I have Pirate Ship open. So let's say I'm gonna send Sally something. All I have to do is come over here and I copy her. Then I come over to my spreadsheet and then I paste the address. And then I make sure it's in the right places down here. And then I'm good to go, right? I can scroll down, I can enter in how big my package is, how much it weighs, and I can buy my postage and I am good to go. Now the last, last thing that I wanna share with you too is you can add different spreadsheets underneath this one. So what I like to do is I like to add different spreadsheets for the different people that I sent mail to, just so I know. So not necessarily the thank yous, because I send mail outside of the thank yous as well. So I send like my, um, like my monthly postcards. So I also document that. And so I have different tabs down here at the bottom that has like February mail outs, March mail outs, April mail outs. So that way when I go and click on that tab, I can see everyone that I sent a mail out to and what it was. So that way I know that they did get whatever it was that I sent.
So you can even have different tabs. So if you did watch Chloe's video talking about like your bulk sampling and what samples you're making, you can have different tabs for the different months and what you're sampling as well. So I hope this helps. I hope I didn't overwhelm you, but I hope this opens some doors to people who aren't a fan of all the other things, aren't a fan of Trello. Um, but again, it's digital. So if you're out and about, you don't have to worry about carrying anything with you. This is in your pocket. Just pull it out, open up the Sheets app, and you can see who you need to follow up with. You can do it while you're walking, while you're at the park, or you're anywhere. So I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, put down in the comments. I will try to help you as best as possible. And until next time, I hope you have a good one. Bye, guys. So what?